r slash no sleep posted by you slash 10 minute horror never hold your breath part 2 the house i swear the chill between us made the entire lake drop a few degrees how was a house built down here who built it it wasn't new it looked to be a hundred years old even without the water damage moss and seaweed growing around its base although that being said it didn't look that bad in fact it looked pretty good structurally it was all there the longer i looked at it the more i felt like we were in a snow globe about to be shaken by a nightmare before i could signal to clay he was halfway to the front door of course this is the kind of thing he'd hope to find down here he could explore further go through people's old things past lives that all made me uneasy even though i felt the pull to follow him i've never been a fan of the idea of going into previously public places underwater not that i've had many opportunities but we've done scuba tours on vacations and explored old shipwrecks and things like that. Places where people have walked around, slept, lived, died. Caving creeped me out the most. I read a story once about a family that had gone caving, but lost their line and didn't make it out. When retrieval divers found the bodies, it looked like the family members had all fought over the last tank of air. I've never gotten that image out of my head. The more I thought about the family, the further Clay was getting from me. He was at the front door now and turned back to give me the middle finger. I checked my air, we'd only been down for 10 minutes. It felt so much longer. I checked the rest of my gauges and everything was green. When I turned my attention back to the house, it was closer. I didn't realize but the current was gently carrying me forward. I was floating above the front lawn now a few feet off the ground. I kicked my fins and moved towards the porch. I floated up the stairs, thinking of how many people used to walk up and down them. Clay had his knife out and was fiddling with the door. He snapped it open, and cracked another glow stick. Movement to my side brought my attention to the windows. Curtains were flowing out of them gently, like a current was coming from inside. I followed Clay in. A large open living room to our right. A piano sat in the back corner, surrounded by a floating stool and several floating chairs. Sheet music floated above the piano as if in frozen animation. A shelf housed dozens of music books spilling out. Clay pretended to play the piano, and I pretended to laugh. We continued on towards the back of the house, which didn't look better. The kitchen, which had a blown out door leading into the backyard, was devastated. The back walls were heavily damaged, like something had hit them from the outside. A tornado maybe? Or a wave? We could tell from inside because of the marks on the opposing wall. Clay circled back around me and headed towards the stairs up to the second floor. But no. Wait. There was a door before the stairs. Clay opened it, looked in and down. Then he gave me the biggest grin. I knew what it was before I swam over. The basement. Of course it was the basement. If the rest of the house seemed dark, the basement was ink. Clay cracked a glow stick, tossed it in. It tumbled and fell and came to a stop about 20 feet below. There was a long, narrow staircase that was broken and missing halfway down. Clay swam in cracking another glow stick as he scanned with his torch. I floated in the hallway for a second, watching him drop down into the abyss. When he got to the floor, he turned back and waved me down. As I passed over the broken staircase, I turned, swimming backwards to see under the stairs. I hated basement stairs and always had the image of hands grabbing me from under them, pulling me through the slats into the dark. Somehow, not having any stairs at all made it scarier. I got to the floor and scoped out the basement, we were in a wine cellar. A huge one. Rows and rows of shelves. Floor to ceiling. Clay was swimming along the wall, scanning through the rows. He got to the end, about 30 feet away, and stared down the row. He turned back to me, and waved for me to swim over. I didn't really want to go, but he pulled me over with his invite. And that curious part of my brain flared up and wanted to know what he was looking at. I swam along the wall, looking through the rows of shelves, each one as dark as the last. I got to Clay, and followed what his torch was pointed at. In the far wall, there was a large hole broken out of the concrete. It looked to be about four feet high, and a foot wide. Surrounding it, were a series of other smaller holes, almost like a honeycomb. I'd seen foundations broken and cracked in odd shapes, but this was a new one. Clay floated up to it. Suddenly, something darted out of the hole, hitting Clay in the mask and then whipping past me. It was a pike I think. Northern Pike, probably. Clay spazzed out like I've never seen him before, and swam backwards into a shelf, knocking it over and into the next shelf, which hit the next shelf. Oh shit. 
Before I realized it, sediment was being thrown up from the shelves and bottles hitting the floor. The room was quickly turning into an underwater sandstorm while the way out was blocked from vision. I couldn't see clay, the flashlight in my hand, or my nose. Shit, shit, shit. This is like what happened to that family. I felt clay grab my hand, and he yanked me forward. I hit the wall on our right side, and realized we just had to follow it forward. Follow it to the stairs. Oh no. The lower half of the stairs are missing. Okay, we'll just get to the far wall, and... Wait. Was there a far wall? I couldn't even remember seeing anything on the other side of the stairs, I only looked towards Clay. What if there were more shelves down there on the other side? Or rooms? What if we got lost down here? Clay yanked me upward. Up again. Up. I kept kicking and following him up. Please be leading us out, Clay. Please. He would. He'd get us out. He always got us out. I'll love you forever Clay, just get us out of this. A horrifying thought popped in my head. I don't even know where it came from, but it's stuck in there. What if Clay wasn't the one pulling me? Visions of some underwater witch pulling me down a deep, dark tunnel and away from my brother and the way out filled my mind. And just as that thought struck my full-blown panic nerve, I was pulled through the basement door and out to the first floor hallway. Oh my god. We were out. It was Clay. He got us out. Thank you, Clay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But also fuck you for bringing us down there. Clay turned back to me, smiling like an idiot. Of course he was. From terrified to fearless in seconds, in classic Clay form. I caught my breath and checked my breather. Only five minutes had passed. I kept my eye on the front doorway out. Clay was slowly drifting away, looking around, still investigating. I didn't care. I was just great right here. Right where I was. And just like Clay, he started looking up the stairs. The second floor. Come on. We just nearly died. Maybe he didn't look at it that way, but I did. He waved and got my attention, pointing up the stairs. I shook my head, waved back no. He went up anyway. Now I was alone on the first floor. Which was starting to seem scarier than following him upstairs. The basement door was slowly creaking open, sediment leaking out like a poisonous vapor cloud. Fuck it. The upstairs looked as dark and uninviting as the downstairs. But nothing was like the basement. Clay cracked another glow stick, which I figured must be half left now. I thought about eels a lot. I ran into one on my first night dive last summer in Hawaii. I've never seen anything so predatory looking. So evil. It just appeared out of a shadow in the reef, stared at me and smiled. I thought it was gonna take a bite out of my face. But it didn't. It just stared. That was enough. The memory's still with me. And there were lots of shadows upstairs. The stairs opened up to a thin hallway with three doors to the right, and one at the end facing us. Clay pushed open the first door to find a small bathroom. It wasn't big enough for both of us to go in, which was fine by me. And he didn't spend much time inside anyways. So we were on to the next doorway. Clay cracked another glow stick as he pushed the door open, but rushed back immediately. I looked into the doorway and saw a face staring back. An eel. I opened my mouth to scream, but then saw the edges. The edges of the painting. The face was in the middle of a canvas, though fairly weathered away, so when the torch hit it, it made it look like. Well. An eel. Clay nudged me, I can see the smile on his face, he's laughing again. This whole thing has been a riot for him, I bet. I'm still shaking. I push the painting back into the room and see another dozen paintings floating around. Most of them were landscape style, but a few were profiles. The faces dissolved down. Staring out at us from the darkness. Clay pushed off, heading to the next room. What were we looking for? He was acting like there was treasure hidden somewhere. If he tried to take anything though, I wouldn't let him. You never steal from the dead. The next entrance didn't have a door, though I wish it had. It was a children's room. A crib was floating upside down in the middle. Toys floated around it. A child's onesie floated past the door. I felt a pit in my stomach, and got more annoyed at Clay for bringing us up here. Maybe I should have just swam outside waited in front of the house. No. Don't leave your partner. Especially your brother. Unless you have to. But there was no technical reason to go up. And Clay wouldn't cut short for less than that. The last doorway, again without a door. Clay cracked another glow stick, and swam in. I followed slowly behind him, but turned back down the hallway. Fuck. The painting had floated out of the room, and was now in the hallway. Staring at us. This fucking house. 
I turned back to Clay, and followed him into the main bedroom. It was heavily damaged. The back wall was missing a large chunk of it. Clay dropped the glow stick in the middle of the room and swam around inspecting the dressers and walls. He got to the back wall and looked out. I saw the bubble stop coming from his breather for a moment. He leaned through the hole, squinting further forward. He turned to me and waved me over. Another smile. I had no idea what could be out back. Frightening flashes of a family of eels swimming by cut through my mind as as I looked out. But there were no eels. Even if there were, I was so caught off guard I leaned completely out of the hole anyways. For the second time on this dive, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. There was another house. But not just one. A two-story building stood beside it. And another. And more houses. And more buildings. Streets. Street signs. Street lights. And more beyond the limit of visibility. There was an entire town. How is this possible? And then I remembered those large metal and cement structures I found above water on my walk. Of course, that's what they were. And like tumblers in a lock, everything fell into place. Even if the why didn't make sense yet. Those cement structures were part of a dam. And for whatever reason, someone blew it apart to flood the town. 